Okay, good morning, everyone. It is day two, week two of Web Fun. So let's go ahead and get started with today's morning algorithm. And then after that, we're going to discuss the exam rules. Um, we're going to do, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a uh, review of, of what you're going to expect during the exam. And then at two, we're going to do a uh, demo of uh, something we would do in the exam using JavaScript. After that is uh, lab code reviews. And uh, I do have some practice material that you can use. It's not on the platform uh, that you can work on today, most likely tonight. Uh, if, you, if you, yeah, I guess I'm still debating in my head when I should give this out. Because I don't want to overwhelm everybody that has not caught up with the assignments. Um, so I'll figure it out. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into our morning algorithm and then uh, get started with our day. Hey, Josh, I do have a quick question. Yes, sir. Um, the assignment likes under the uh, document object model. Yes. Uh, that is core and required to take the belt exam, yes? Because it's not on the schedule. Um, yes, I'll add it to the schedule if it's not there, but I'm pretty sure that is. So let me double check that. Because um, if it doesn't have that P next to it, then it is core. Yep. Okay. Good catch. Thank you. Uh -huh. Let me make a note of that now before I forget. Okay, let's get started. You guys see my screen, right? No? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so yesterday we went over objects, right? And we uh, noted how to access an object. So let's go ahead and do some quick review. So we can say var um, obj or object equals, um, and then we can assign the object. So we have an example here. It starts with a curly bracket. It ends with the curly bracket, different than an array and it has key value pairs, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and, and just write this out really quick. Var obj equals beginning, end, and then we have the, the key, and then we have the value, which could be a string, number, and they're separated by commas. So how do we access something in the object? Yes, you name the object. And then we say object.key, and this will give us the value. All right, so this will give us value. Okay, so then let's go ahead and work with objects today. We have this object called monster. We have an ID of one. We have a name, string Bulbasaur, and we have these types here poison, and grass. So we know how to access something in array. So if we have an array, ooh, that was ugly. Um, if we have an array that has two things in it, like uh, three and four, how do we access the four in the array?
someone someone tell me so I know that we remember. How do we at one? Right. one. Mm -hmm. R at position one will give us this here. Okay. So then if we have an object with an array in it, um, if we have an array in it, uh, sorry, let me just look at this here. How do we access then the grass in this object? Let's think. We know how to access something within an object by saying its type. So then if we have an array as a value, how do we pick out a specific point in the array? Can someone give me an example? Types of two or types of one? Right. Yeah. He has you guys have it. It's intuitive. Monster.types at that value in the array. Okay. So here we have a giant Pokemon object, different Pokemon. And so we are going to be playing with this object. This actually, this is an, this is an array of objects. This is an array of objects because we see here, it starts with the bracket. And each thing that has curly brackets is an object within the array. And we also have arrays within the object within the greater array. Why do we think that, I mean, what's, what's a guess as to why we have an array to encapsulate types when, for example, in this one here, last toys there's there's only one item in the array why would we do that keep them separate keep them separate from what the name and the type right but you see how in the name here bla name blastoise it's name just name is a string and then in the array is it's uh like bio more or less what it can do just defining it right right you know you're on the, you're thinking right about what what it what it does but i'm asking why if it's only one item here why would we stick this in an array because the rest of types are in an array exactly <clears throat> because it's, they have multiples yes so some pokemon have multiple types um, and so we have to, if they have multiple types, stick them in an array. And for those that only have one type, we also want to keep it consistent so that when we access the type, the first type, we always know that we're going to be accessing an array. So it was such a simple question. It maybe seemed like a, like a trick question here. It's just to keep it consistent. Some Pokemon have multiple types. So every time we access the type in the array, we're going to be accessing or the type in this key value pair, we're going to be accessing an array. Okay, so we are going to go through some challenges. Let's look at this one first. If we wanted to console log the names of the Pokemon who have an ID greater than 99, we could do this. For var i equals zero, while well, i is less than Pokemon.length because Pokemon is the name of the array. So we're going through the length of the array. Iterate through it. And if at any point in this for loop, Pokemon at i, id, that index id is greater than 99, then we want to console log 
Pokemon at I's name. Okay, so it's a little bit verbose here. All we're doing is creating a for loop to go through this array, Pokemon. And if at Pokemon at I's ID is greater than 99, then console log Pokemon at I's name. Okay, this is how we search the arrays index. Uh, and then that index object uh, key. So we get the value. So you could write that same Pokemon of I dot name dot type dot ID, and it would access that specific description of the object at that uh, indice. Uh, so ask it again because i think there was a there was a, something wrong in there say that state, statement again um you could use uh that same pokemon at i and write dot name dot id or dot type to access that specific description of the item at the array right the, the dot is what lets you use any of the descriptors that we have for that yes. item yes okay when we're at uh, whatever index that we're searching through in this Pokemon array, we land at an object. When we want to access something in that object, a value, we only have to say the dot notation for the key, dot name. So in this case, I'm looking at this one, dudong. Dot name will give me dudong, this string. And as we noted, what if we want to search through Pokemon at eyes name uh, at eyes types? So we have the types and then we have an array. And then we may have to search inside that array as well. If you console logged uh, Pokemon of I dot type and there was it was one of the ones with two uh um, two entries in the array for types, would it return the entire array if you didn't specify to search within the array? Yes. So that's what I okay. want you guys to work on on your own. You're going to discover here through practice how to access everything uh, through the for loop uh, in this array of objects. Okay. So let's go through these challenges. Number one, we want to console log the Pokemon objects whose ID is evenly divisible by three. We know how to do this, right? Use the modulus symbol. Divisible by three. Number two, console log the Pokemon objects that have more than one type. Okay. So there's several here. Console log the Pokemon objects that have more than one type. Three, console log the names of the Pokemon whose only type is poison. Only type is poison. So let's look through this here, see if we can find it. Arbok and Ekans. Their only type is poison. And number four, the first type, console log the first type of all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So some of them have uh, flying. This one, for example, Butterfree is a bug and a flying type. Second type is flying. So this would be logged. Pidgey, normal and flying. So this would be logged. I don't think there's any that have just flying type by themselves. No. So all of them that have flying have their second type as flying. The question here is asking only the first one, right? The first flying. It's, it's uh, asking the, the first type of all the uh, Pokemon. Uh, first type of all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So the first type of all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So in this case, if we log Moltres, we're going to log Fire because the second type is flying. The first type of 
all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So if they have a second type who's flying, we're going to log their first type. And the bonus challenge, the reverse console log, the reverse of the names of the Pokemon whose only type is poison. So we're doing basically number three, but we're reversing the names of the Pokemon whose only type is poison. Okay, five challenges for you guys. Um, so get familiar with objects, how to access them within an array. Uh, this is going to be really good for your overall JavaScript experience uh, on the job uh, in general. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? Any other questions? For that bonus, do we need to make the function reverse it or can we yes. just force it down no. yep that because we we know how to reverse it ourselves we have to make the machine do it okay so that means we can use a reverse function right um we know how to reverse an array right we, yeah so yeah we, we've done this now we just need to access that that uh name of the Pokemon whose only type is poison, see the string here. All you need to do is reverse this string. Reverse this string. Like spell it backwards? Spell it backwards, exactly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's go ahead and break out into groups if no one has any other questions. Okay. Let's go ahead and break out. Welcome, my son, to the machine. All right, let's see how many groups are we going to make. Oh, I got to make Joe co host. All right, guys, have fun. All right, let's get this uh, party started here. Who wants to share for the first challenge? The Pokemon objects whose ID is evenly divisible by three. I can go. I'll go. Okay. Somebody, whoever screamed. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Carlos. I didn't realize there was someone else. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Okay. So we did the same format from. This guy more or less copied the first line. Okay. Right there. I'll go ahead and make it out. Um, using index with uh, Pokemon dot length. And then we did an if uh, Pokemon indice. And then the module of three. Um, and then the checker to zero. Okay. So nice. So that uh, that's gonna go ahead and log that. Looks and... like the console log needs to be moved up inside the if statement. Yes, thank you. I did that. Okay. Now let's check it. Oh, that's why I dragged it out. Did you save it? Yeah. What I do wrong? Uh, sometimes it just. You, you need to check the ID. You just have Pokemon so far. Oh, the ID. Yeah. I don't know how that I got erased because we definitely had that in there, Carlos. 
There we go. Yeah, we no, we these. did. I don't know. We checked each of these before we were done, and they all ran. So, okay. Oh, cool. And then, I guess it over. All right. So we have this one here that's working nicely now. A couple adjustments, but it's all, it's all good now. Okay. All right. For number two, let's have another group present. I'll go. Okay. Go ahead. Keep. Uh, who was that? Leo. Leo, alrighty. Okay, so to find the Pokemon objects have more than one type, we did the same thing for the initial setup, just set up the for loop, um, set an I less than the length of the Pokemon array. And then we wrote an if statement going through the array of objects and checking the types.length being greater than one. And then we console logged each Pokemon object. Okay, let's let me uh, check here the instructions for this one. So this one here says more than one type. So okay, all right, this is good. Okay, let's run it. Let's run it. Let me. Console on this last one. Let me comment it out. Let's see what we're missing here. We have, well, cl clear your console. Uh, you can do that with, right there, that button that has the. Oh, got it. Or, or that's another way, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I pulled up each one that has more than one type. Okay, great. You've got it. Cool. Nice job, Leo. Thank you. All righty. Now another group for number three. I can do ours, but uh, Carlos is my group, but I can do it. Okay, sure. Thank you. All right. Yeah, Carlos, you want to send it to me in the in the chat room, or in like um, Discord or whatever, wherever okay. it matter. Or Carlos, why don't you present your screen and keep? Oh, and then I can even better look at you. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize I was muting. Uh, that's what I was saying. I'll do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so at first, all we had on line 44 was uh, just Pokemon um, with at the um, index of I that types is equal to poison, and then that didn't work. So we had to realize why that wasn't working, like what else we were missing. And then we got um, a hint from Joe, and we realized that we need it to look at the actual um, indice of that ray first before it even compared. Um, what was what was in there so that's why we have pokemon i dot types dot length is um equal to one first and okay. then we and then it looks at um so we're having it do two things we're having it look at how many things are in the array and then after that it looks at um the value of the array and then if both of those statements pass then the um the name gets console logged. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And then we get a return of e cancel. So we have Eggins in our box. Okay. Ekans, yeah. Carlos, can you remove the uh, index pointer on the uh, second condition statement after types and run it? It's not going to work. Oh, nice. Joe, you said that wouldn't work. Because remember, Joe, I asked you, I was like, why do we <laughs> have that? Well, there's there's more than two Thank Pokemon with poison in their, in their types. Uh huh? 
Never mind. I don't know. One sec. I might have been uh, missing something. Joe, where you at? Did you uh, save Joe, it? Is, did you save it, keep it, or Carlos? Yeah, I did. Because yeah. remember, Joe, remember how I was asking? Because I said I wouldn't have thought. Thank you, Spencer, for asking that question. Because I said, remember how I, I said I wouldn't have thought to, to put that um, index of zero after types? And I, I and then um, I was asking, would it work um, without that? Oh, I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I just assumed that we couldn't compare. Maybe if you put a third equal sign. You can't, I didn't think we'd be able to compare the entire array to just the string poison and it come back true. Well, that's the beauty of trial and error. If you put a third equal sign there, see what happens. Interesting. Yeah, that's what it was. So it's because JavaScript's all loosey goosey and it doesn't care that the it's wrapped in an array because the string inside the array is the same, which is honestly kind of getting a little borderline ridiculous. <laughs> like uh, I don't, uh, an array is should not be the same, even if it's just like, you know, the only thing in it is poison, but whatever. Yeah. In case you're curious, this is the difference between strict, strict type and loose type. So it's looking at the value in the array and it's equating it to uh, the array with the double equal sign. Just saying, if that's the only value in the array and it's poison, then it will it will work. But with the triple equal sign, can you understand why it doesn't work? It's because it's it's looking at strictly an array, and not there on on the poison. Um, no, I know. I was just saying what would happen. Word. Yeah, that's going to still be the same because one mm -hmm. is always going to be one. Cool. All right. Good job, guys. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to number four. I'll go ahead and read this one again. The first type of all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. Can I do this one? Okay, go ahead, Evan. So um, Justin and I were working on this one, and I actually <laughs> misunderstood, <laughs> I misunderstood the first one. Um, I thought it was supposed to be not just, not only poison, but if it has poison at all. So we just, we copy that and modified it here. We have two for loops running. So one for loop is going through the, the array of, of objects for Pokemon. And then the second for loop is going through all just, just the, the types of every Pokemon in the array. And so if it equals flying, I want it to console log the Pokemon of I and types of, of zero because it's looking for the first one. Um, of the types. And so when I do that, it gives me this. Nice. Um, I didn't console log the names, but I could, you know, also do that of each for each of the types. But I think it was just asking for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a way to do this without a second for loop? Um that's kind of that's hmm. I did it without a second for loop. Is that a bad okay. thing to have two for loops, or is it? I don't know if it like is it like a memory thing, like we were talking about with making. Well, general when when you get more advanced into uh, solving algorithm problems, if you have a for loop within a for loop, it's going to take extra time for it to solve. And yeah. I don't want to introduce this this uh, topic now, okay. uh, but. In general, if you can avoid a for loop within a for loop, a nested for loop, then it's it's really good. And that's okay. what we can use while loops for sometimes. How about Spencer, then you share for uh, this one, please. OK, so we have one for loop. Uh, OK. You said I equals O. Is that an O or is it, did that still work at line 49? Mm -hmm. Or is that just the font? Maybe that's just the font there. You're muted, Spencer. Yeah, the font's not the most amazing font. That is a zero. Okay, okay. So we have four... I equals zero, I is less than Pokemon length, increase I, okay. And then inside the for loop, we have an if statement saying, if Pokemon at I's type uh, at index one is flying, 
console log Pokemon types, uh, Pokemon at eyes type at zero. Okay. So this does the same thing without a second for loop. Yeah, we got the output down here. So it assumes um, it can have three, four, five, six, ten types because it's only asking who's second type. So I just search for the second location in the array and then I output the first location in the array. Okay. So the difference then between yours and Evans is Evans checks the whole array for at any point if it's flying. Right, Evan? Yes. Subtle difference, but both work. Uh, but yes, Spencer, you're looking for the second type. So you were very precise here. You didn't have to do a, a second for loop in, within. Okay, very good. All right. Now, would another group like to present for the bonus? Anybody? Anybody? Me and Clark can go. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Clark, do you want to share and I'll explain? Okay. Um, so we, for our for loop and uh, if statement on 51 and 52, uh, we use the same one that we used for question three to check uh, any object whose only typing was poison. Um, and then the only thing we did extra was setting new variables, one to an open empty string, and one to the um, output of the original for loop and if statement, and then ran that through a second for loop that reverses the string of uh, the output of the first for loop and then console log that new string. Okay. Okay. So one for loop goes through the whole array and then we check with an if statement, checking if it if its type, if its first type is poison, if its only type is poison, and if the length is just one, then we create a new string and then we say the random string equals Pokemon at I's name. And then we iterate through that string and then add to a new string to reverse. Was there a way that we could have uh, done the reverse with a temp variable so that we didn't have to create uh, a new variable at line 53? You guys remember that one? Okay. No. So that would be the only way to to improve this um, that I can tell, which would be, uh, and this is going to be really helpful to to remember. Uh, when whenever we're reversing a string, is to create that temp, the value at the beginning of the array or string goes to the temp. The value at the very end goes equals the beginning, and then um, then you say the value at the end equals temp. That way we are not using extra memory. What if this Pokemon's name was a billion characters long, the most rarest Pokemon or something? Billion characters long, can't pronounce his name. I'm just giving a, a wild example for when you're dealing with other types of data, reversing strings. Okay. So let's go back and uh, relearn that that algo when we have time, when we're not studying for the test. And uh, with that, we're done with today. We're going to go ahead and... Um, am I not saying Pokemon right? Pokemon? That's how you say it. Is it Pokemon? No, I'm not going to say that. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and 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 take a break here and uh, get started with the uh, test review. So does anyone have any questions before I break out? About today's algo, any other solutions? Okay, let's get our break on.